Travel from Germany to Iceland, this year's guest nation at the Frankfurt Book Fair. A stunning land of stirring tales and avid readers. The wind has been blowing for hours, and it's bitterly cold. The sky and the earth have become one. There's nothing but snow and storm. Two people struggle through the terrain of Iceland's Vestfjords Peninsula. It's a battle between life and death. The Sorrow of Angels. Jon Kalman Stefansson's award-winning novel describes that battle. We meet the author at his home, not far from Reykjavik. Sadly, I think that we people have believed for the last 100 years that, that we can escape the nature, or maybe not escape, but control the nature. And uh, man never can. But Jon Kalman Stefansson's novel isn't just a story about the overwhelming power of natural forces. It's also about the longing for meaning and consolation. And those are things people in Iceland have always found in literature. Some words seem to defy the destructive power of time. They weather, of course, but they harbor life long gone, kisses long blown away. Some words are shells in time, in which a reminder of you might be hidden. We travel through a bleak landscape. In Iceland, language has provided one of the few opportunities for artistic expression. That's made Iceland arguably the best-read country in the world. Even editions of the medieval sagas can be found in any bookshop next to crime fiction and works by international and Icelandic writers. One of the country's literary rising stars is Guthrun Eva Minervudotir. She drives with us up the coast to Akranes, a small industrial town in the west. This is where her latest novel is set. In it, Akranes becomes a symbol of desolation, a claustrophobic world of lonely people. The book is entitled Skaparin, The Creator. The creator is Svent, an art student who has broken off his studies and specializes in manufacturing eerily realistic inflatable dolls for men. He sells his lifelike sex toys to customers around the world. He didn't see himself as an artist, even when other people sometimes applied that dubious term to him. He was a craftsman, highly competent in his specialty without boasting about it, because vanity was, in the end, nothing other than the spoiled sister of stagnation. His task consisted of working as precisely as possible to create the illusion of a human consciousness adorned with blonde, blue-black or copper-red curls. Then one day a woman appears and steals one of his dolls as a companion for her depressed daughter. It's a psychological portrait of a society of solitary people. The author isn't interested in current debates or politics, at least not in a novel. Some writers have a role that is very close to being a journalist. It's a very important role. It's like you... You take everything that is happening uh, right now and uh, digest it a, a little bit and, and show it to people like a mirror there and then, you know. Uh, and this is the role of uh, uh, crime fiction and some literature. But uh, I think I'm a slow thinker or something. Who could tell us more about the writer's role in Iceland, in this small country on the edge of Europe, which first became an independent republic in 1944 and which has always retained its own identity through its language and literature. We travel further inland to a place of literary pilgrimage. The Laxness Museum stands just outside Thingvetler National Park. Icelandic writer Haldor Laxness, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, lived in this house until his death in 1998. We're welcomed by Haldor Gudmundsson, former publisher, Laxness biographer, and organizer of Iceland's presentation as featured guest country at the Frankfurt Book Fair. 
Gudmundsson says Laxness was a national saint, a political artist who campaigned for Iceland's independence back when no one believed it possible. Nowadays, Laxness features on the school curriculum. But the time when national poets saw themselves as the voice of the people is long past. I think it's very important that contemporary Icelandic writers and artists see themselves as part of European contemporary literature, as part of this creativity in other countries. If we compare that with Laxness, for instance, his whole life long he struggled inwardly to be both Icelandic and cosmopolitan. That's no longer a problem for the younger generation of writers and artists in Reykjavik. They've long been internationally networked. These days, Icelandic artists don't just go out into the world. The world also comes to Iceland. We're in Topstuven, a former power station on the outskirts of the city. For three years, it's been a cultural center. One of the founders is Andre Snaya Magnusson, author and filmmaker. He's written a children's book and a science fiction novel. A fairy tale is soon to be published but his greatest success is a polemic against the dream of unlimited economic growth, dreamland. What I wanted to do is approach reality kind of with the same method as I did with, with fairy tales before. I wanted to ask stupid questions. I wanted to be able to translate the language of economics, of, uh, of politics, into human terms. Let's imagine an island. That's how the book begins, like a fairy tale. Dreamland was a bestseller, and Magnuson has made a film version as well. He showed how Iceland's breathtaking countryside is being increasingly destroyed by greedy power companies, and he calls for resistance against this exploitation. But in addition to highly political stories, Icelandic readers also like small, melancholic books, like this one about a farm woman's life of hardship in the 19th century. Joza, by Christine Steinsdotter, is based on the life of her grandmother. Christine Steinsdotter is one of the country's most successful authors and is chair of the Icelandic Writers' Union. Her books have been translated into numerous languages. On the slope stands the castle, and there is smoke rising. Single window panes gleam in the morning sun, and he walks down the path towards her. His powerful hand encloses hers. His soft beard tickles her cheek. She's home. Home is Iceland. Even when many authors leave it, the language and nature bring them back. We have really wonderful books, some very good authors. We have the sagas, of course, and all sorts of beautiful things to show people. And I would like people to read these books and find out more about Iceland. And Iceland's writers awaken our curiosity about this country at the end of the world.